I started off with two sheets of 8 foot by 4 foot 6 millimeter thick marine ply. One sheet was cut into four equal strips and then the other sheet was cut diagonally to form the base of the boat. The sides were then trimmed to give the tip angle of the boat. The ends of the base and sides were butted together using a GFRP connection with battens fastened either side to make sure that it didn't move whilst the epoxy was curing. So here is the boat. Um, well, it's a boat. Getting there. The joints between the bits of ply, all I can say is it's agricultural. I use um, cling film and it's not coming off well at all. It just sort of, it's as if the sort of something in the epoxy has made, made it weaker. And the ends I've stitched together with uh, wire, just temporarily. The next stage is to try and get it to bend to that mould by partially lifting the tips up and partially forcing the mould. This will create a sort of mini deck. It's partly to reinforce the front, it's partly a handhold. And this is the tip reinforcement. I'm going to glue and screw that in there. So that's five minutes of rain and... <laughs> Jesus, that's a lot. That is a lot of rain. Right, so I've been doing other stuff while it's been raining, including cutting out these gunwales, which are to run along the side. I've fastened the base on with these strings. To fix the base to the sides, I used a thickened epoxy resin, so just plain flour mixed with epoxy, and then overlaid a layer of glass fibre tape and then fresh epoxy on the top to finish it off with. It's absolutely pissing it down with rain, but this is epoxy is about to go off, so I'm apparently in my tarpaulin. pretty good. Looks like some of the epoxy hasn't yet gone off because it's so cold and damp. Well to help things along a bit I have introduced the uh, high-tech hair dryer system. I flipped the boat over and used a straight flush cut bit with the router initially and then a uh, round over bit with the router and then various sanding machines to make it smooth. So that's the base trimmed down and I put um, a nice sort of curve on the edge to allow the fiberglass to sort of drape over nicely without too many sharp angles and one gap there that should be fine I added glass fibre tape to the edges around the base to reinforce it. I wetted it so it stuck nicely and then pushed it down with my fingers and a brush and then I installed a keel strip. This is partly to help with strength and partly to help with abrasion resistance going over you know, shallow stones and objects in the water. I glued and screwed it on to make sure that it wasn't going to go anywhere. The rib reinforcements are made so that they don't need a top piece because I'm going to be sat in there. Um, this front one will probably will have a top piece most of the time. So it's the end of day three and we've got a boat which should float. And we're sort of trying to dry things out and keep it warmer here with the light and the hair dry. And I've got some a rather old new epoxy on here, which doesn't seem to like the old epoxy. Nice bit of brass. So, at the beginning of day three, left everything a mess last night because it was so late and I just needed to get to sleep. Moment of truth has the new epoxy gone off? Let's see. Oh no, it hasn't. 
hasn't. It's incredibly sticky. Oh no, I meant to be leaving in a few hours and floating about this afternoon. That's really bad. This is the emergency oven. It seems to be working quite well. We've got the hair dryer this end with a bit of air intake. Then hot air runs along, comes out the front and it's warm and smelly. Still sticky and tacky, but off we go to Wiltshire. Hopefully she dries along the way. Join me for the second part of the series where I take two old disused bikes and convert them into a brand new type of pedal to paddle propulsion system for the boat.